So how, yeah. how was Plasma 6? Did you... Well, I were... Yeah, they are changing. I'm not entirely sure if it's better or worse yet. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> and uh, can you very quickly present yourself to say what you do? Hi, my name is Michael. I'm a content creator, just like Nico. I am not working for the Plasma team or for KD. <laughs> and I'm here to ask some questions about the new and upcoming release of Plasma. And, Let's and... find out what all the fuss is about. <laughs> oh, but there is a reason for it. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Hopefully. <laughs> so Hopefully. <laughs> what sparked uh, this video for me is uh, I saw your video regarding Plasma, the latest one. And I actually went through it to see uh, I actually saw a lot of actionable uh, feedback about it. I do have to say that I did watch it when it came out and now I completely forgot what it was about. <laughs> do we have like a very quick summary about what is said? So if anybody missed it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so if I remember correctly, uh, because it's been a while, um, yeah, I was talking about Plasma and the things that it does way better than, the, uh, than GNOME does currently. Uh, mostly about feature completeness in terms of new features, variable refresh rate, fractional scaling, and all that. Um, a customization, of course, is a huge part. And in general, how Plasma keeps itself more up to date than GNOME does, or at least it seems to do so. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I did switch my daily rig over to Plasma because exactly of the reason, because I like playing games, I like to try out new things, and I'm trying to build the, a personal desktop environment for myself, what I really like. Yeah, I love how the summary is extremely positive and paints uh, Plasma in a very positive light. I do remember some criticism as well. And I also saw, like, maybe it was a tweet or on Mastodon that you said that the more you customize Plasma, the more it gets similar to GNOME, because that's the work. Same happens for me, actually. I do really enjoy the GNOME workflow, apparently. So we're apparently very close in that aspect as well. So if you have any Plasma-related question, yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, to be honest, um, before we start off, I did try out Plasma 6 already in KD Neon, and I gotta say, I love the new overview. It's oh. it's actually <laughs> insane what uh, you pulled off, <laughs> uh, speaking directly. I'm very happy to hear not, that. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's, it's really impressive. Yeah, uh, it's it's not quite the same as in GNOME, but it's very powerful in its own way. Like I, I love the like that. I'm I'm not sure how it's called. Like when you cycle through it and you see like all of the desktops and the grid view. Oh, the grid view, yeah. In in the grid view, like like that is something that I really like when I have a lot of windows open and. I am very yeah. happy to hear that. And really, my idea there was just copying GNOME because what they're doing is <laughs> very good in my opinion. I also tried for a certain amount of time to map that uh, overview effect to the meta key on my laptop to see how it was. The main difference of course is that I don't have any way to launch applications in that. Uh, there's the search but of course you don't have all the applications on the bottom like GNOME does which is cooler. But uh, I, I was very happy, happy that I managed to actually implement that. <laughs> so I, mm. I'm, I'm proud. <laughs> <laughs> That's very, yeah, it, it's it's very good. But like, like you just said, the launching of applications is a bit tedious. But I guess it makes sense if you have several windows or several desktops open, then it, it's kind of hard to access like a sort of panel or something. And the thing is that Plasma is extremely modular and you can change everything. So just the idea of implementing something like a bottom bar to launch your applications in the overview, then we have to start thinking about, do we have like a widget in there, like it's on the panel or do we do something custom? Because if it's a widget, then probably the user should be able to change it, like install third party widgets to replace it. So as soon as you start mm -hmm. allowing this, a lot of complexity ramps up. So uh, we just decided to keep it simple for now, but there are like ideas ideas and designs on how to actually insert some of that stuff in the overview as well. Yeah, I suppose it's very challenging in that regard, especially customization. 
if you give the user too much power, then it, it tends yeah. to break way more frequent, I guess. <laughs> yeah, code-wise, it makes life our life very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so how, yeah. how was Plasma 6? Did you... <laughs> the, the alpha yeah. Plasma 6, did it work? <laughs> it worked. So I, I didn't try it out on bare metal, uh, but I ran it on my Proxmox server with everything GPU accelerated that was possible. So to get the basically bare bones experience, I guess. Um, no, like initial impressions are really good. And I I love the new floating panel. It's, I don't, I'm not sure what it is exactly, but something about it makes it feel way more modern. Even though the old Plasma panel was also very it. nice looking. <laughs> No, it's uh, interesting. I also took a look at the new settings, which were, yeah, they are changing. I'm not entirely sure if it's better or worse yet. <laughs> well, uh, I guess it, it still takes some time to figure that out. Yeah, that, that's true. I'm not sure the... So uh, we spent a lot of time actually discussing how to uh, put the categories in a way that makes sense for the user and such. And it's not like 100% complete because uh, some technical reasons, obviously. Uh, I am sort of happy about the categories. The only thing I'm not sold uh, about is the order uh, they are inserted because when we discussed all of this, I thought we were just putting them in random order but that was actually the agreed upon one. So I was <laughs> a bit confused about that, but <laughs> generally speaking, I thought they are fine. And uh, I do think that we made the search button in system settings much more powerful. So if you need to find something that comp compensates a bit the amount of options that we have to provide mm. in system settings. So yeah. One thing, it, yeah, something comes to mind. I was going through the old settings and what I did find, and I didn't know this before, was a grid view. Is there a reason on why this was removed in Plasma 6? Yeah, so the grid view is uh, a very a relic, a relic of the past, so it is very old. And what we've been trying to do is, are you familiar with the difference between QT widgets, QT widgets and QML? I'm not sure. I don't think so, no. Okay, so basically most of the older, we could say, uh, KD applications are written all in like C++ uh, through uh, Qt widgets. Uh, Qt is the, um, the fr framework, the mm -hmm. library that we use to actually draw anything on the screen. And previously uh, it was through Qt widgets, so all C++, but for the more, more modern applications, we could say we now instead use QML, which is a declarative uh, programming language that uses JavaScript mm. inside of it. And it is much, much easier to actually write an interface in it compared to Qt widgets in my personal opinion, but we are switching to it. So I think it's not just me. But so right now we have a lot of applications done in Qt widgets like Dolphin, like Gwenview. And then we've also have uh, QML applications like Discover, like the new system monitor. And slowly some applications are switching from one to the other. Others application like Dolphin probably are staying with Qt widgets due to the complexity. And system settings, system settings is very weird because currently it's half Qt widgets and half QML because some of uh, some parts of uh, system settings have been ported over to QML. And uh, our end goal is to have eventually all of system settings in QML. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, the, the grid view that you found was very old. It was Qt widgets only, and we were trying to get rid of it. And we would have done that much earlier if it wasn't that apparently accessibility works much better in it. So uh, there's one distro, I don't remember which one, which uh, still uses it as a default because the accessibility is better compared to the sidebar. 
But eventually for Plasma 6, we just decided to finally get rid of it because we just prefer to have everything over QML with the design that uh, we are going towards. So that is the future of uh, system settings. Quite interesting because I found that, like, I, I don't I don't like a grid view, to be, to be clear. <laughs> uh, I, pre I prefer uh, the current style, but I think from my personal experience working in IIT support that the grid view makes sense for some uh if it should be a default or not that's up for discussion but if no one wants to use it anyway then yeah yeah it doesn't really are, make sense <laughs> we are trying to move away from it and also it's a bit harder to maintain two different main views at the same time we prefer to just have one that we think is the better one in our opinion and uh, focus on improving that mm -hmm. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> uh, speaking of what what makes sense and like, kind of making everything in the same style, uh, there are still a lot of KDE applications. I guess mainly old ones that seem to kind of don't comply to the to the new guidelines. I was wondering. Like, I didn't look it up. How old are the current guidelines? <laughs> It can't be older which, than Plasma 5, I guess. The, the thing like is, the, which guide, guidelines are you referring to? The, <laughs> the general, the general, uh, how, how, how is it called? KD Plasma. We do have human interface guidelines. Yeah, I, I think uh, I mean those. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's a very complex topic. Uh, so. There's, there are some issues there, and part of those issues are my fault as well. Uh, the human interface guidelines, in my opinion, right now are very weak and quite useless in terms of KDE development, regardless of uh, the field like we're developing in. When I do UI work, I never look at them and I barely ever, uh, even ever consider them. So, and that said, other people are maintaining them and trying to keep them up to date. I feel like they don't say a lot that is uh, very useful and tells us how to design stuff. It's very basic stuff and colors, fonts. I, I, I feel like it's a weaker part of KDE currently, not having strong guidelines that actually tell you how to build your uh, interface, which ends meaning that much of KDE uh, is quite inconsistent with other parts of KDE and but it's very difficult difficult to actually try to go ahead and solve that and mm. uh, now we did make an explicit effort towards that in uh, I've been for three years the gold champion for consistency at KDE and the design now, I think, is much more consistent compared to some years ago. And uh, I think just a few days ago, one very cool thing that another developer, Carl Schwann, did is that they ported the look, general look of the window of the new QML application to the older, um, older isn't fair, but to the Qt <laughs> widgets one. So now the interface is a bit more consistent and slowly we're, we're making progress towards that, but it's very difficult when half of your applications are in one programming language, half of them are in a different programming language. So it's not easy, but I, I do understand when, when you're com uh, where you're coming from and the guidelines should be improved, generally speaking. Yeah, I guess, like, I don't know how many maintainers are in GNOME uh, in comparison to KDE, but I, I believe that the, the whole philosophy on how everything is built is, is com completely different. And I, I don't, I don't want to <laughs> get too, too close to someone, uh, but it feels to me like the like KDE Plasma just implements a, a lot of stuff, um, not necessarily as fast as possible, but way faster. And it doesn't really pay attention to any, like, like you said, like you don't really pay attention to any guidelines. and. I believe that that's one of Plasma's strengths, even though it's also one of its weaknesses. And striking a good balance is, is, is necessary in that regard. Yeah, it's one of the... 
differences between the projects and uh, it's hard for our uh, KD developers to try to find a, ba find a balance between you know being super powerful implementing everything and actually stopping to uh, ba fix bugs and uh, make sure everything is stable it is something that we've been focusing on a lot in the past few years trying to make the default out of the box plasma experience much more refined and uh, stable getting closer to a gnome experience but still retaining all the advantages of being customizable and everything obviously mm -hmm. yeah i think it pays off <laughs> like the steam deck kind of shows that gnome is not really the best choice anymore for or it seemingly isn't by default and a lot of developers of distributions are really considering moving away from gnome in some sort of way because it's development pacing it's basically the debian of desktop environments so to speak <laughs> a bit slower a bit more reliable i guess that's not really true but in, I feel like yeah. a, a bit it is. Uh, it, it is a bit more reliable i think it might be very yeah. subjective but uh... it, it is subjective so the winter resolve crashes a lot more on gnome and i don't think no, it didn't ever crash in plasma yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. If you think about it. No. Yeah. And that's on Debian, by the way. So I, I don't even know what's happening on, on GNOME there. <laughs> that, that's great to hear. Yes. Uh, I, we, there are some projects that are using KD Plasma, like uh, out of the box very recently. The Steam Deck is probably the biggest one. And that was a pretty a game changer really for a lot of us uh, as an example i can tell you that currently i'm working part time on developing kd plasma and my work is sponsored uh, by valve themselves because they uh, use kd plasma so they want kd plasma to be good so they sponsor some work regarding to kd plasma and i'm part of that so and there's many developers uh, that are working on KD Plasma thanks to Valve. So it actually helps a lot uh, to improve it. And mm -hmm. that goes for um, distributions as well. And uh, of course, we ha as KD Plasma are happy and want uh, distributions to switch to KD Plasma. Uh, we are quite friendly, I think, generally speaking, towards GNOME. Uh, we don't really like to uh, insult each other or anything quite the opposite we have done some nice collaborations in the past our main goal is not really to try to eat uh, gnome's market share but windows and macintosh so th that's our end goal <laughs> mm. no it's the absolute right approach <laughs> speaking of me if you, like if, if i'm too harsh on a desktop environment i guess that's just like how i like to look at things it's, it's not how i actually mean them uh trying to bring in new ideas from from different perspectives what perspectives <laughs> and it, i i believe it's somewhat working i mean <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm speaking to people who work at desktop environments <laughs> no um but in all seriousness uh i was actually wondering how how, how does development at, at, at plasma or for for plasma work like like how do you how do you work together with your your colleagues maybe even friends <laughs> yes surely yes. and uh, <laughs> well we mainly uh, organize through uh, a chat so it's um, some telegram chats and then the official chats are on matrix so you can just join they're actually public so anybody can get in see actually people discussing development and everything and that's the general discussion and then of course we have our gitlab repository and then people do merge requests and then people comment on the merge request so the, the usual stuff we do mm. have some uh, meetings uh, once in a while so uh, as an example for plasma there is one meeting every monday and sometimes we do it as a video chat sometimes we do it just in the chat and that's it really so there is no uh, there is no strict way to organize things that you have to do. It's just uh, things that make it easier for volunteers because m the vast majority of developers are volunteers to uh, talk to mm -hmm. each other and that sort of stuff. 
so so no really like hard deadlines i guess it's, it's more like a you have you have your topics for the week let's say or your, your features you want to implement uh then you'll get to it and yeah well, once it's done it's done basically or or yeah uh, we are the volunteers it's not even like topics for the weeks it's like it, they're volunteers they yeah, do whatever of they course want. it's and everybody yeah. <laughs> has different approaches uh, uh, different approach yeah and different ways <laughs> to do things different deadlines the only hard deadline really is when we publish a new version and stuff has to be ready unless you want to do it in the next one so of course uh, when you actually if you're like <laughs> sponsored to work on kd plasma with a different company then that company is going to give you a bit more rules and organization but if you're mm, a volunteer you course. can just do whatever <laughs> and mm. most kd developers are volunteers uh do you have a touch device personally i'm not sure if you do oh i if have you run plasma touch. on I have multiple I have multiple touch devices before you said that runs plasma I was gonna take my phone but uh, okay no <laughs> that doesn't run uh, plasma I do have uh, somewhere in my bag over there uh, XPS um, Dell XPS 13 developer edition uh, laptop which is touch screen so I do test stuff with touch screens and I also have the Steam Deck which is also touch screen so I have two mm. of them I wanted to also buy a touchscreen monitor, uh, but sadly, <laughs> I didn't find one that I liked enough in my okay. budget. So, but one day, <laughs> one day I will have one. I do love touch uh, touch screen just a lot. Okay, I, I just wanted to know your just a plain opinion, no, no matter what it actually does. Four finger gestures. <laughs> Do you like those or not? Because I, I find them tedious for some reason. I don't know. Touchpad or like touch screen gestures? Depends. Sometimes sometimes it's the same. Yeah, that's a good question, actually. <laughs> sometimes so, it's the same. No, the, the typical ones that I use, it's the same on, on the touchpad and the touch screen. Yeah, uh, currently they are the same. Because there are some touch screen gestures i think in i think in gnome yeah which are just very odd to use and i was thinking wouldn't plasma uh, couldn't plasma just keep it at three fingers and be done with it is so, there are there any considerations in that regard or the question is more like what's your approach to usability in regards to like cust custom devices like something something weird yeah so uh the thing is, currently we are keeping the same gestures for touch screen and touchpad, uh, which are like three fingers up, three fingers down, left, right, four fingers up, down, left and right. And then you have pinches and stuff. But uh, the thing is, uh, three. so firstly, the main actions that we want to trigger through gestures are firstly, uh, switching between virtual desktops. And I think almost all operating systems have like three fingers left and right to switch between virtual desktops. And then usually that gives you the ability to also do three fingers up and three fingers down to do different kind of things. However, in KD Plasma, again, customization, lots of things to think about. We have uh, vertical desktops as well, and we cannot know whether the user is gonna use vertical desktops, horizontal desktops, or a grid. So we need out of the box to provide gestures to switch in any direction uh, for virtual desktops. So currently three mm. fingers is up to switch desktop up, down to switch desktop down, left to switch desktop lap, uh, left, and right to switch desktop right. And that already takes out all the three fingers gestures. So if we want to, to have any other kind of gesture, like opening the overview or like the grid view, it has to be four fingers because the three fingers one are all in switching desktops. And because we cannot make any assumption on what the user desktop layout is going to be, we just have to provide them out of the box. 
and it's not like we can dynamically change the gestures depending on how you have virtual okay. desktops Context. because then nobody will, act mm. will actually remember them. So there are some considerations. And personally, I don't think that uh, four finger gestures are bad for uh, touch uh, pad. On touch screen, it's a bit worse, uh, but Apple did a, f did a five uh, ge uh, fingers gesture oh, to close applications. <laughs> so if they can do it, we can do it. <laughs> okay. So it's basically just um, m more fingers for more features, essentially. Uh, yeah. <laughs> instead, instead of work, instead of, yeah, it, it, it's a bit tedious, I guess, to, to work around that uh, in any other way. The best thing to have would be to be able to customize gestures. That would be ideal. However, that takes a bit of time and skills to implement and nobody did it yet. We would like to have it. Uh, sp speaking of gestures, that's actually, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of questions that haven't been asked before. <laughs> um, mouse, uh, mouse keys and hot keys. Currently, those don't work together. I believe it's because of the the current hotkey backend. Is that correct? Like you you cannot map mouse keys to the plasma hotkeys unless you do it through through the desktop. Like what mouse, mouse by... actions, I think it's called. What do you mean by desktop hotkeys? Uh, like the the mouse actions. It's in it's in the. I guess it's called the desktop settings. Uh, like where, where you can scroll between desktops, uh, where, can you, where you can map the scroll wheel, or if you have more mouse buttons, then you can map those to certain actors, uh, actions on the desktop. But you cannot map mouse keys in the settings, like the, okay. the default hotkeys. Uh, and I, I think... Sir, I actually don't know about this topic. You caught me off guard here. I, okay. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I would have to okay. ask other developers. Sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, because like in, in GNOME, for example, you can scroll between desktops if you like press the meta, uh, meta and you, you scroll through it. But I haven't found a way that I could configure as a similar way in, in Plasma because I cannot map the scroll wheel in the hotkeys. And I, I think that is a technical limitation. I'm, I'm not entirely sure anymore because like in Plasma 6, I think it changes or is it still the same system? I am not sure. I don't think it changes much. I just know that currently we got rid of um, K hotkeys in Wayland, like mouse gestures, but those ones were like moving the mouse whilst doing pressing the middle button to uh, activate a gesture, it was a weird thing. Uh, but other um, other than that, I'm, but I'm not sure. Like, you, I, it's not a project I contribute a lot to, so I, I'm, okay. I'm not sure about that. You caught me off, uh, off guard there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it's uh, like the, the, the mouse actions in, in general are kind of hidden away in some sort of way because you don't find them in the typical hotkeys, but on the on, on, in a desktop submenu, I think it's in the change wallpaper and then under actions. Yeah, I, I think uh, I it's it's a bit idea. weird and yeah, and I'm not sure are, if sorry. I think those are even hard coded right now. I, I don't want to say something incorrect, but I think they're even like hard coded and you can they don't change depending on what device you have. But I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, it, they, they are a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there, there's always room for improvement, <laughs> I'm certain. <laughs> I, I will tell you, uh, as a, <laughs> I actually uh, stopped using uh, a mouse uh, a year ago or something. So I don't have a mouse anymore. I just using a drawing tablet for everything, mm. which I find Good. to be much faster and more effective. <laughs> it's theoretically also healthier because like, if you hold like a mouse, your your arm is basically like this, and like the natural position would be like vertically and not flat on the surface. So it's it's actually healthier. <laughs> I'll take that. 
No, it's it, it's a good idea actually. I, I was thinking about getting one myself, but then I was like, meh. <laughs> can't, can't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. House Plasma Six coming along like currently. There are a lot of bug reports I've heard or I've read. And do you think that you'll be able to keep your <laughs> yeah, timetable more or less? <laughs> yeah, so uh, we do have the soft feature freeze, which is when we have to stop adding features tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So all the features that are to be implemented in Plasma 6 are going to be like either ready tomorrow or they, they will be uh, swi switched to Plasma 6.1. So from tomorrow to the release date, which is three months, it's just debugging. And three months is how much time we usually spend on one entire release with features and everything. So we hope that three entire months of just debugging should be enough to end up with a good result that is stable and everything. That said, of course, we changed a lot of things even uh, behind the scenes. So the first release is probably going to be a bit buggy, and but hopefully that's going to be just a matter of a few weeks before everything is nice and ready. But I do think that three months should be enough to address all of the bugs that we are receiving now in the beta. Still, that doesn't mean that it's going to be perfect on day one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. If it was done at one day, then we would all get bored and... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been already like, uh, I don't know, five months of development. I don't remember, but uh, it's going to be the longest KD Plasma version ever. So <laughs> <laughs> I hope you can all wait for it. <laughs> you aren't bored. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it it seems really promising so far. Oh, and one thing that I forgot when I mentioned the, the floating panel earlier. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like margin errors that it doesn't get thicker anymore. That's like, that... it, is, well, was it before? Because it was essentially just a panel with a mask? Yes, it's still basically the same now but there's it's much more complex but, <laughs> because uh, so, trying so to improve it, I think. yeah uh, the floating panel has been very difficult to implement much more than i initially thought because initially i just wanted to make something simple and that worked it had some issues which were obvious it didn't have any shadow and when you maximize a window the floating panel would become extra thick and that was mm. by design. I wanted something simple that worked. With time, we uh, kind of have th had the idea to improve it and then use it by default. And to improve it, uh, it was quite a journey. Initially, I didn't think it was possible. Like, I, I just <laughs> gave up on the idea. I tried many times. I couldn't find a way. Eventually, I managed to. And uh, it uses a lot. It's not hack hacky but it's, I, I don't super like how it's implemented right now could be better but I just couldn't find any other way to make it work <laughs> so right now I'm just hoping that it works nicely right now I, it seemed to have not too many big issues but I still have a lot of lagginess the panel jumping around some missing animations so it does mean that in these three months I'm gonna spend at least a couple of weeks just trying to make sure it's perfect mm -hmm. but it was quite difficult <laughs> you mentioned animations that was actually something that i forgot i found animations in plasma are a bit inconsistent like the um, I, i'm not entirely sure what it's called like it's 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 not tiling it's snapping a window to the side i think i think yep. it's called snapping uh like the snapping doesn't have an animation, but then like resizing a window, making it full screen or, or minimizing it, like that does have an animation. I'm pretty sure it does, wait. <laughs> um, ah, yeah, it doesn't. It, oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, like I, I'm, I'm not sure why, but, but I find that like, extremely distracting. <laughs> and, and there isn't an obvious way to change it. Like there's probably a way to do it with Kwin scripts, no. but I didn't really find anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Uh, okay, yes. so uh, I, I just noticed that it doesn't have an animation. Th that should probably get fixed. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're right, it should have one. I thought it had. Maybe it was taken off for, for some like uh, techni technological reason I'm not aware of. Um, actually, the snapping thing is implemented in Kwin, which is the window manager. It is rather technical in the window manager, so I, I don't touch it. I do other things usually, so maybe <laughs> there's something I'm not aware of. But yes, it would be much nicer if we had animations. Again, um, it's not easy to think of a way to be certain to have like consistent animation throughout. We do have some standards, such as the um, uh, easing curve of an animation is a standard. So at least we have that. But then each animation I feel like is very different from the others. So it's different to have some rules to have a coherent animation thing is. And mm. usually it's like small issues, small missing animations, such as snapping a window that are missing and um, we, we should just fix them. <laughs> yeah. mm. and I, 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 I agree with you there though, yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's a bit, or at least I, f I find it a bit off throwing for, I'm not even sure if it, it's probably just the inconsistency uh, and, and not really the immediate snapping because a lot of people do like it that way because it's just fast. Yeah, but <laughs> if you maximize it, <laughs> there is an animation, so... <laughs> yeah, that, that's, 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 that's a thing that was a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Usually everything has an animation, like if you minimize, if you open a pop-up, if you close a window, all of that stuff should have an animation. I am quite surprised by the fact that snapping, snapping <laughs> hasn't. Like I don't, I don't want to ask questions that have already been answered by others. <laughs> <laughs> what else were some? Oh, nah, that's, that's the compositor, that's, that's not really something. Um, I don't know if you know the answer, but or maybe that's depending on the distribution. I've tried on, on Fedora and I've tried on Debian, but the compositor settings are forced to the smoothest animations. Are forced? Is there, Sorry? Uh, the, the compositor, I think it's called compositor effects animations. Hold on. The effects animations. Yeah, they are for, uh, forced to smoothest essentially. And I was wondering why that is okay, because I think so the better approach is... would be balance between between smoothness and responsiveness. I think that changed at some point. That's a very good question. This is another um, very technical Kwin thing. I do remember that sometime in the past, uh, got to be one year or something, there has been a lot of work uh, from the Kwin team. I think it was mostly Vlad, but I might be wrong regarding actually uh, making sure that uh, when you draw a frame, it is put on the screen immediately, uh, some, something like that. I'm not very technical on Kwin as you yeah. might guess. And uh, I, maybe the setting changed back then, but I do remember that it was actually very difficult bal balancing uh, this thing with actually having smooth animations and everything. I'm not sure how it was actually achieved eventually. I just saw that there were some complications and then I mm -hmm. kind of stopped following. Yeah, the, the thing, what, what comes to mind in that regard is, it's always like people like to compare desktop environments on, on how light and how fast they are. And it's like always, yeah, KDE is fast. It's not the lightest desktop environment. Of course, it comes with a lot of features. And that setting was something that kind of threw me off in that regard, because it's like a bit controversial, like it's supposed to be fast, but it's also forced to smooth as animations. And, and I was just thinking if there was like a, a main reason behind it, but like, as you said, you're, you're not that right familiar enough. with Kwin and of course. Right now, I don't <laughs> know. If it was up to me, to be honest, I would prefer smooth animations to uh, having the frame immediately on the screen. Like, I, I think on the average user, that would be nicer because most of the time it's like pressing a button and an animation happens. It's mm. not direct uh, uh, interaction with constant interaction with the window manager. 
but uh, I guess it really depends and I'm not sure how it's implemented exactly but uh, I, I d generally speaking I found KD Plasma to be very fast and quite lightweight on all of my machines even I had a uh, Pinebook which is very low hand and um, still pl mm. Plasma was fine no it, it really it, it runs really great like I have like a, a weird one I'm not sure if you've seen it um, I have like a very old one gigabyte DDR three or two I'm not even sure if it's DDR three laptop and oh boy um, Plasma ran just fine but other desktop environments especially older versions of GNOME like GNOME three or something yeah that was that was slaggy yeah let me tell you yeah well, one thing of, one thing about plasma on uh, low end devices is that it's plasma is usually uh, slightly less fast the first time you open something that is qml because it has a key uh, a cache yeah, i think it's called in english a cache yes and mm. uh, it just builds that up so immediately it doesn't have the cache so when you start at, uh, opening the dialogues it just gets much, much faster so <laughs> hmm. That's interesting to know because, like, I didn't notice any slowdowns at all. So I guess it's 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 really more of a low-end device problem, which is kind of impressive if it's actually shader caching. Because, I mean, it's most noticeable during or when playing games, of course, because there are like a lot of shaders. But no, I, I didn't experience any stutters so far, at least not that I'm aware of. That's great. So so it works, <laughs> and I think it. Everything still renders with OpenGL that didn't change at all. And that makes it, or at least in my case, it makes it a really good candidate for using like a virtual GPU with 3D acceleration. I think it's called, uh, yeah, well, well, Proxmox calls it virtual, which basically is Virto uh, OpenGL acceleration. And it just runs battery smooth. It's probably the smoothest desktop environment that I can run in a virtual machine with yeah s sort of hardware acceleration i guess it's it's not quite a pass through but it it works That's it cool. works so it's <laughs> I, yeah i really enjoy using plasma in, in virtual machines <laughs> nice okay <clears throat> I'm out of points, or at least I think I am. The rest was just backup of repetitive questions. <laughs> <laughs> you absolutely want to be 100% original. I respect that. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of, I, I don't really like it when it's the same questions over and over again. Maybe a bit updated. And I did watch, uh, yeah, the video you did with, um, yeah, uh, the Nick with nick yeah yeah <laughs> makes sense <laughs> with nick and I, I was watching through it where i was making notes like oh <laughs> that was covered and that was covered and that was covered and then i watched it again and that was like ah and <laughs> this needs to go now i am and... absolutely feeling guilty that i forgot to write down <laughs> the notes on your video <laughs> <laughs> no uh all, all i really want to say is that Plasma 6 is going to be a, an interesting experience and I truly can't wait when it's like in, in, in a very official stable state, no longer in development, so basically a 1.0 version. Um, That's what, going what, to be what will change? End of February, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of time still. <laughs> yeah, a lot of time is not not really. I think I yeah. think it's going <laughs> it's 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 only um, how many more? 12, for 13 more weeks or something? <laughs> yeah, n n don't give a anxiety bit. to me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm already stressed enough about it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's probably going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that I, I remember uh, uh, a teammate, of, even. teammate of mine uh, a month ago or something that was like, uh, well, by mid-January, um, sorry, by mid-December, we're going to know if we have like 
uh, Christmas vacation or if we should spend all Christmas uh, working on Kitty Plasma. <laughs> Hopefully we can take some vacation. Stuff seems to be working. <laughs> That's good, yeah. No, everyone, everyone should enjoy it. Yeah. A, gr a grind to release is, is, is not really the right approach, I think. <laughs> because yeah. it will only only be rushed in the end anyway then. And Sorry? Better, better. It will only be rushed in any way. So yeah, better take the time, polish it in a... Yeah, I don't want to say stress less because a bit of pressure is probably beneficial. Yeah, but like and in, in a good pacing. We are doing stuff like selecting the wallpaper as well, which is gonna be a, a major <laughs> thing because, of course, it's it's just the wallpaper, but it's never just the wallpaper. It actually affects the image of Plasma, so we gotta we gotta choose carefully. And that is a whole another <laughs> complex issue. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Do, do you, you don't use AI for that, do you? <laughs> no, that, that is... I could talk hours about <laughs> that. No, but we do mm. not use AI. We couldn't even if he wanted to, but we, mm. we don't want. <laughs> but of course, there's all the copyright uh, drama and uh, it changes. The copyright actually changes from country to country. So n we can't use it. We don't want to. So we even have like Krita, an application for artists, mm. and we would lose of all of our market share <laughs> immediately <laughs> so no, no 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 ai <laughs> at all <laughs> that's a positive way <laughs> yeah yeah let's see i'm actually i'm actually happy that uh it, it's not as integrated yet as windows tries it to be it's it's uh, way too early or in my opinion have you but... seen um dipping Deeping is trying a lot to integrate AI into the desktop. Not sure how it is. I haven't tried yet, but mm. I was quite surprised uh, by that. Yeah. So from my experience, everything text-based text -based works fine if you give it enough context. Uh, you often have to talk with it and give it a certain role, like you are that person in that scenario uh can, can you do this for me everything image related or that triggers some actions in i think we went with copilot like in your operating system it's it's messing up a lot it's it's not ready yet okay <laughs> that's good to know but let's see I did experiment a bit with uh, like giving uh, text models such as uh, GPT, um, like um, a configuration file and then telling them to change a value in the configuration file given a user request. So it's gonna be like change the wallpaper to something else. Mm -hmm. And then the model actually finds the correct key in an XML file to change that. It was interesting, but nothing that we can actually use. So, <laughs> no, I, I, I don't, I don't have any more questions currently, or at least I, I can't think of any spontaneously. Because I hope I, I, <laughs> I answered all of the plasma sick question in a effective way i'm sorry for the more tec technical kwin stuff but i don't work there so <laughs> yeah but I, I was expecting that like i, I knew that already of course uh, and um, i'm happy that you like the overview and the floating panel i'm very happy to hear that <laughs> yeah those are like the two things yeah th those are especially the things that like stand out or if you use them then, it, then it's just it just stands out as something that is different from and anything else, I guess. Like, I'm not sure if, if there is any desktop environment that handles it in such a way. There's, or at least... I, I was very sad to hear this, but apparently Windows 12 is going to use floating panels. So... Yeah, it's it's rumored. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I hope they don't but do that. But... It, it, it just needs to be released after, and it's fine. <laughs> yeah. But people are still going to come to Plasma and say, you copied Windows. That, that's going to happen. I just know that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I, I think you also mentioned, let me bring up one thing that I do remember um, in your video, this cover. And I oh, don't... Oh, yeah. Wait, yeah. what the hell is that not in my... I'm, I'm not sure. It feels a bit dated, but a lot of that has to do with... It, it's it's default design. I, I don't know, like you can do a lot with, with theme colors. Like I, I've made my discover a bit more bluish and it looks a bit more legible for some reason. I'm not sure like the contrast is a bit better. Uh, anyway, um, the settings are a bit odd when it comes to theming, but I think that that's also a relic of the past, like that you can download frames straight from the settings instead of discover. Like it's, it's currently both, but, but like with different user interfaces and everything. Yes. So we initially, you could download themes and such, uh, just from system settings. And then we thought of adding them as a different section to systems, uh, to discover as well, to have a unified way to find out all about the KD store. You can also literally go to, I think it's store.kd.org and see mm -hmm. all the themes there as well. It's the same thing in three different places, just depending on what you need. And, um, the thing is that uh, design-wise, we've been working a lot on Discover, and I say we, but I didn't do anything. So other <laughs> people worked a lot on Discover, and the design should be much improved compared to previous versions, and it is improving at each release. And yes, design-wise, there's always like little quirks here and there to fix. Uh, there is uh, some blue text on white that isn't quite doesn't have the necessary contrast and such. There's also, usually when we receive um, Discover complaints, and I think I did see some of this in your video as well, but again, I don't remember exactly. It is stuff such as uh, maybe some um, results aren't showing or it's loading forever, these kind of things. And mm. those aren't actually Discover's faults at all because Discover just uses the backend uh, to fetch for packages and such. And most of the time it is actually the um, distribution that incorrectly configure, configured the whole thing. And we are often, we often have to try to communicate that to the, to the user, like uh, with a pop-up that says, uh, this issue is because of your distribution. Actually, it's not because of us. It's not our fault, but it, it's difficult as you can understand. Mm -hmm. but yeah, and, and I guess one thing that is also kind of odd in that regard is like integrations, you know, like like Flatpak support and Snap support, those things that you have to, to integrate manually into Discover. I, I'm not really sure if those are perfectly working all together because it's another thing that you have to consider when you update something in Plasma, uh, in Discover, uh, a, a lot of things need to work, uh, yeah, need yeah. To, to work somewhat together and, and it, 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 it gets difficult. When you have to manage like three different stores working completely different ways, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, it was a side note. I, I believe that making a good software store in general is something that is really hard because it's like it, it's a market essentially like it, it needs to advertise applications but it also needs to just work essentially like I like for example I like the Microsoft store in terms of visuals but anything else in terms of usability is really tedious to use like how do I get to my installed applications how do I search for or how do i effectively search for applications when filtering categories you just need to move your mouse across the, your whole screen and it's software stores are probably just like settings really difficult to get right yeah that's probably true especially when you consider just how many different pieces are working together to actually provide you with that because discover really is just a front end to something that's behind. And when you want stuff like, there's been a lot of work on implementing, uh, being able to pay for applications in Flatpak. And uh, even Kelly is doing a lot of in, on it, not me again, but 
it, then you have to implement that and that is completely separate from the discover which is just the front end and then you still have the package manager from the distribution and everything has to work together it gets complex really fast and when you see like um, stores from other uh, operating systems they look as if they are just one monolithic application but of course <laughs> behind the scenes mm. that's not how they work mm. yeah and it's and it's really hard especially like if it's just a front end and of course every application on different distributions has different ratings sometimes they don't support a feature or a rating sometimes they do have some it's it's just really mixed and well it, it's part of the fragmentation i guess uh flatback seems to fix a lot of these things but also has a lot of disadvantages especially yeah. sometimes in terms of performance not always for some reason still better than yeah. snaps <laughs> yeah <laughs> those are weird in their own way like i i don't quite get their philosophy me neither but it's true that uh, stores are difficult and uh, especially with discover it was using it was one of the very first applications to be using qml so it was uh, quite experimental i think at the very beginning and it took a bit of time to iron out all the bugs, even just in the framework, like Kurigami, which is in the middle between QML and Discover, like fixing the th stuff there. So it took a bit of time, but now it's much better. One thing that I would like to see at some point, I'm not sure if it's planned, I maybe need to look at that, take a look at this, uh, filters in terms of like looking for add-ons like the current way or especially in the, in the install page where everything is, is mixed together like themes are mixed in with applications uh, i was talking about uh filters on the install page in discover yes. okay like the, I, I think that would make sense but i would need to take a look at, the, uh, at that if it's already being worked on or not um, that uh, totally because it's a bit confusing sense. uh i i don't think there is currently ongoing work in that Especially given you have many more, more oh, many more. Is that correct English? <laughs> you have more filters uh, if you try to mm -hmm. use the online store or the uh, hot mm -hmm. get hot new stuff. It's called the application directly within system settings. You click on uh, get new themes and such. You do have uh, filters, I think, and either filters or different ways to sort like ratings or downloads and such you do have, oh, yeah, have options mm -hmm. there so discover is a bit lacking in that i think uh, because it, it's not really what it was meant to do it was something that we added later on to have a unified store of all themes but sure i don't see why we wouldn't eventually i, I don't think i'm working on this right now but eventually sure <laughs> Everything at the right time. Yeah. <laughs> Pl Pl Plasma 6 comes first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> and it's gonna take some time, like some good amount of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's still a bit to wait, but can't wait to check it out. Once it's, it's fully gonna be released. Awesome. Totally gonna be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Me <Nice>. too, yeah. <laughs> so if you don't have further question on development, do you have any? Uh no, I think that was everything. Nice. So we... def definitely <laughs> We almost stayed in the one hour mark that we <laughs> talked about, so that's good. <laughs> so, sort of, yeah. <laughs> sort of. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, thanks for the interview. Uh, thanks for contacting me. I would have probably never thought of that myself, to be honest. <laughs> No, and thank you. For, uh, thanks for the opportunity to actually talk about Plasma and what we're doing because it's very nice to actually being able to show that the development uh, is transparent. <laughs> like we are, we are very happy to let people know what we're doing. So, oh, I I don't have a doubt about that at all. Like even even if the well, even if we weren't talking to me right now, like KD Plasma is, is transparent like in any way. Uh, all that people really need to do is to just 
take a look at it, join Matrix or whatever. Uh, yeah, that's more a challenge. <laughs> we do have a lot of documentation on how to get involved. If anybody wants to help out a bit, uh, just going to kd.org and clicking on, on get involved brings you to a wiki page, which is like 10 pages long with 15 different ways to contribute. It's quite awesome. I don't know who written it, but it's mm -hmm. awesome. There's also, let me very quickly mention, uh, currently a campaign to actually fund, uh, fund more development for Plasma 6. Uh, which is all about supporting members uh, who are the people who donate at least 100 euro each year to KD. So it's like less than 10 euros a month. And uh, we are trying to reach uh, 500 supporting members. We're currently at 350 or something. So that's good, but mm -hmm. we're very close to the, to the goal. So if you want to help out KD Plasma financially, that's a very good way to start. I have to do the marketing part as well. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So thank you so much. And uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs>